is a journalist, Miriam Saleh. She joins me um, virtually from Beirut. So good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. So there have been calls in the past um, to reform Israel's legal system. So why do critics see these new proposals as too interventionist? Well, but what you're looking at is only one facet, actually, of what we see, what we're witnessing as a deteriorating um, state, basically. Uh, and even the fact that many are calling the fact this is the death of a, of a democracy and so on and so forth, it is originally, we need to remember, that uh, Israel is not a democracy. How can we call it a democracy when it, it was actually uh, built over uh, the lives and the bodies of women and children? Uh, we know that those who are ruling the country, those who are the decision makers um, in that uh, specific place in the Middle East uh, were actually not the natives of the land. And thousands and tens of thousands were forced out of their homes, out of their countries, out of their, uh, their houses. Uh, now they make up billions of the natives of the land. This is also in addition to the fact that it's an apartheid state, that the natives are uh, undergo daily persecution. So if you put all that aside and look at this, if we can call it an artificial state that was founded in 1948, um, we see how it began to, with the appearance that it is a democracy, that it has a judicial system, it has a cabinet, it has a cabinet a that people um, a vote for, whereas what we're seeing right now could probably be the judiciary in uh, Israel is actually just a tool that was used by the government as a tool of rebuttal, actually, if there is any sort of international outcry. When we have things related to our any criticism on uh, violations, uh, either the annexation of more land from the West Bank or, the, or uh, our Jerusalem outputs, uh, or the, the sanctions against uh, uh, Gaza or the continuous wars that it has launched in the Middle East against Lebanon and the Palestinians. Uh, so this is uh, this was just a tool being used. Uh, so what we're seeing here right now is just the fact that uh, basically Netanyahu is freeing himself uh, from those clutches that were originally not real clutches because the violations continued. Uh, the building of illegal settlements continued. The annexation of lands continued. Uh, the annexation of lands underneath uh, uh, the uh, the al Mosque uh, that continued despite all uh, so called uh, judicial uh, ju court rulings and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this will basically just pave the way uh, for more free lands or uh, free corruption, um, uh, violations, uh, illegal moves, persecution of the natives of the Palestinian people. Um, so basically, uh, this is just only one facet. And what we're looking at is, like I said, this is inherent, inherent self-destruction uh, of these, this Zionist state, uh, they, this, this destruction uh, began bit by bit as they continued to launch wars uh, against Lebanon, uh, they occupied Lebanon, the continuous also occupation of Gaza and so on. But we saw that that begin maybe after the year 2000 somewhat. Uh, there were more military failures. Um, there, this, the military in itself from within was uh, becoming uh, also destructive, more defeats, and so on. It did not have the capability that it had before. What was before the year 2000 was not the same after the year uh, uh, 2000. Um, the the so-called invincible army was no longer mm -hmm. invincible. It was defeated by humble um, a guerrilla warfare that was done through the resistance movements in both just, Lebanon just allow, and... Just allow me, um, come in here, just, just allow me, but in quickly, because I understand the fears you, you, you are highlighting now, which is the fears of some people that, look, um, this could also become an opportunity to trample on, on minority rights in Israel. But let, let me ask you, because this is the most religious and the most hardline government in Israeli history. Um, what are the parts of these proposals, um, especially in the occupied West Bank, are people raising concerns about? Well, there are many concerns because what we saw, all the aggressive policies that we saw from the Israeli government towards the, you're calling them the minorities, I call them the natives, they are the Palestinians who are the natives of the land. Uh, they, this will double maybe triple, this will definitely increase in the upcoming days, weeks, and months, 
And God knows what might come out of this, uh, although in one side it could be very much um, uh, a viola a violating the rights of, of the people, um, uh, more annexation of land, like we said, more settlement building, uh, more uh, aggressive policies, as we saw also in the Al Asa Mosque. And we saw from the first day of the establishment of this new cabinet, uh, we saw how they violated uh, the uh, the laws of the, or the, the area of Al Asa Mosque specifically, and how they raided uh, that mosque uh, on on that day. The next day, how their uh, their minister, the minister of the, of the cabinet, uh, raided that area. Uh, and this is something that goes against uh, uh, all those minorities. This is also a violation of uh, of their rights. So the violation of the rights will continue, and those illegal moves will continue. But also, but at this time, it will be done without any, any sort of judicial ruling. So it seems the Israeli rulers no longer uh, care or heed uh, to any sort of international, um, uh, if we may say. Uh, uh, suggestions, proposals, or uh, perhaps criticism, that that has been put aside, that is marginalized. What is important now is that we uh, implement everything that we see, we have in mind, we have, we'll have, we will see an increase in corruption among uh, the, uh, the class, we will see the right wing um, taking, uh, being even more aggressive when it comes to their rating of the uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque and, uh, and uh, the Arab areas in in Jerusalem, Al Quds. So I think we will definitely see uh, a lot of that. We saw in the previous cabinet, for example, uh, how in Ramadan they wanted to um, uh, to uh, aggression uh, mm -hmm. on the the Al Aqsa Mosque, and that was mm -hmm. as a result of certain negotiations or certain uh, calls by Arab states like Qatar and so on. Uh, they decided not to go on with that move, uh, um, but this will not happen with this cabinet specifically. I think this cabinet uh, will allow the right-wing extremists mm. uh, to uh, be active, I believe, in, in their but, violations. Mariam, um, um, President, uh, President Isaac Herzog is, is setting with Mediate. And um, in, in a briefing not too long ago, we had um, from a, from the Prime Minister, rather, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, who said the government suggesting that the government is open to making um, some minor changes. Are you optimistic about these changes that will be made? Well, uh, the word optimistic, I think I would understand it differently. For this Israeli and this apartheid state, and this aggressive uh, state, uh, and it would be more empowering for the people uh, of Palestine, I believe, because I think we will see more resistance uh, to these uh, to these issues, and we'll see also despair uh, from those who are Israeli, and they have this certain uh, belief in this Israeli state. I think we will see more immigration. Many of them will be leaving this Israeli state, and this uh, will be a uh, an opportunity for the natives. Uh, to take back what is rightfully theirs and to take, take back their rights, uh, despite all this aggression against them. Thank you so much for um, talking to us. We're watching developments in the Middle East. Um, journalist Mariam Saleh.